so I'm going to talk about um, altmetrics. And for those not familiar with what altmetrics are, um, I will give you more information. I usually have too many slides for things like this. I was the one who started the uh, by size about six years ago, and I'm, I'm actually quite renowned for not having way too many slides for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so there are several companies that provide altmetrics, alternative metrics to um, scholarly communication, scholarly impact, etc. And I'm primarily just going to talk about um, just a few of them. I'm just going to talk about altmetric.com, Impact Story, and Mendeley briefly. Mostly altmetric.com. So, research is measured in a variety of ways. It's measured via citations. You know, you write something, it gets cited. The more it gets cited, potentially the better. Not always, but usually. Journals have impact scores, which are based on these citations. Academics are given H-indexes, which, again, are trying to give us a bigger picture about, you know, the work we do, the quality of the work we do. But it doesn't tell us everything. And traditional metrics are, as well, they're all, they're all flawed. So alt metrics have kind of come along to complement uh, traditional metrics. Traditional metrics are very slow to accrue. So you take a year to write a paper, you take maybe six months, nine months to try and get that paper kind of reviewed, edited, published, and then eventually a trickle of citations may start to come through. Whereas on the web today, everyone's using, well not everyone is using social media, but a lot of people are using social media, a lot of people are interested in our research, who are not necessarily academics, they may be uh, charities, they may be um, uh, uh, news media organisations, uh, social commentators, etc. And it's good for us to get that feedback. We find the feedback loop that's going around. So these are there to kind of complement. There's a lot of resistance to the term altmetrics. People feel that when it came out sort of six years ago, on the back end of a hack day, that um, it was to actually try and push traditional metrics out of the way. And it's never been the case. It's purely to try and give us an overlay. So it's also to try to give us some way of understanding on how research is being received and used and by who. Because our research is broadcast on a global scale, you know, everyone's research has the potential to kind of go around the world and, 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 and so on and so forth. So it gives us some idea of where our research has been talked about. It's not intended as an indicator of quality. You know, so Andrew Wakefield's uh, Lancet paper on the MMR jab, you know, will have had hundreds of citations, but as a piece of quality research, it was retracted and, and proved to be pretty much a poor piece of research. So it's not necessarily a qualitative, qualitative indica uh, indicator. And it, in terms of when we're thinking about things like impact, societal impact, this will give us further evidence of our engagement and our societal impact. We get to see around the conversations about us. Fund holders get to see what's being said about the research they funded. Publishers get to see how that research is being communicated. So, but also, it gives us credit for other outputs that, other than journals, because what we've kind of measured has been journal-centric and really we've moved to a world where we should be looking at artifact-centric, we should be looking at the actual articles, we should be looking at data sets, we should be looking at discussion, uh, sort of discussion papers, things that we've not measured in the past and Altmetrics gives us that. So I say it's complementary to traditional uh, metrics and say so the, the score um, just tells you what's being said about your, your research, and I'll show you more. So it's about tracking attention to scholarly outputs, um, which looks at things like Wikipedia citations, policy documents, research blogs, uh, bookmarks on reference management tools like Mendeley, mentions on Twitter. There's a lot of research that's been done out there, people like Professor Mike Thuel, you know, who's found that connection between if you make a piece of research open, it's more likely to be cited. If it's open, it's more likely to be tweeted. If it's more likely to be tweeted, then it'll probably might get cited more. If someone saves it in Mendeley, then they've saved it in a reference management tool, which means they may, they're more likely to cite it than they, they, they would have done if they'd not actually put it into that tool to start off with. So it starts to give us all this kind of data. And it's real time, so it gives us immediate feedback on what we're doing. And it will track across all kinds of things, posters, data sets, even code, lots of things that we've kind of ignored or we've kind of tucked away. The data sets, you know, we've kind of, they're a very integral part of a piece of research, but quite often they just kind of sit there hidden away and we're able to take it out now and, and share it as we, we, the talks we had two weeks ago with Jez Cope about the idea of sharing research data. Um, well, the, you know, we can also kind of track and manage it and see where it's going. 
and it also extends to non-academic engagement as I said so it just gives us a broader picture of engagement so there's three things um, needed to kind of populate uh, to, to kind of track alt metrics the first thing is we actually need the artifact we need something like a journal article or a data set then it needs an identifier so that could be a DOI which is a digital object identifier that's a unique kind of number that's given to, to, to the artifact or something like a PubMed ID if you're in medicine and then they look for the mentions so the, the, the piece of research is published people start to tweet about it and if it's tracked back these then we get to find out who's tweeting about it we get to find out geographically where they're tweeting about it if they've shared that data we get to find out where people have shared it on Facebook we get to see if it's been mentioned in Wikipedia we get to see if it's been mentioned in a policy document uh, I was looking a few weeks ago uh, and found something that Professor Simon Dixon had, had, had published 10 years ago that appeared in a, in, a, in a policy document you know just in the last year would we have known that we probably wouldn't and now we're able to kind of track this so how does it kind of aggregate online attention? So it follows lots of sources. So it will follow blogs, news, policy documents, social media. So it will track thousands and thousands of different platforms and sites looking for any kind of mentions of what we do. And then it will search for any links to those papers. It will automatically kind of search and text mine to make that connection between the actual artifact and the fact it's been shared somewhere. And then it collates all that attention. So there's all those tweets about the paper, there's all those blog mentions, there's those news media outlets, and it brings it all into one place and you get to see all that attention on your research. And uh, the, again, detractors of altmetrics will say, well, it's all about kind of popularity and it's all about kind of attention and trying to grab attention. Well, it's, it's not. It's about communicating your research. It's like saying, well, you know, the old model was, I've written my paper, I will stick it behind this firewall, good luck. Well, let's find out what else is going on. Let's find out what else is being said about this work. Uh, you know, because it may be peers, it may be people who've got very interesting takes on, on what you're doing. And then it will show it within these uh, old metric detail pages, which we have embedded within, uh, such as my publication at the University of Sheffield. But it will track more than DOIs, it will track ISBNs for books, it will track uh, PubMed uh, uh, IDs. If anyone puts anything into the repository archive, it will track that. So it tracks lots and lots of different things. In the, it's now tracking clinical trials. Um, on, on the clinical trials, it's got a good gov record. So it's tracking lots and lots of different platforms. Um, kind of these are fairly recent kind of... Uh, kind of stats but it's tracking sort of over 1300 news sites and I know even the likes of Elsevier now are tracking news sites to see the kind of the mentions of there they bought a company called Newsflow uh, so it's looking for for mentions on news sites it's looking on things like Google Plus it's even looking on post publication peer review sites of which there's a growing number of those so where research has been discussed post publication in an open platform so it goes back to this idea, you know, that as Tom said, that conversation that's going on, um, you know, on Twitter, that's the, the, the kind of the virtual conference bar, things like Publons, Pubpeer, The Winnower, etc. These are conversations taking place about someone's research openly. And again, it gives you an idea, of, is it your research that's been talked about? Even on PubMed, uh, there's PubMed Commons, which means that anyone who publishes in PubMed can go on and comment about someone else's research in PubMed. So this is already happening. We'll also check things like Mendeley, site you like, look at read accounts, check things like Wikipedia, Reddit. Reddit has a huge scientific community. It's massively used by academics to kind of discuss and share research. So these, these are not noddy little things. These are not being used by, by, you know, kind of, we have to move beyond that these are cats on skateboards. Uh, YouTube is used very, very well by many academics. I remember seeing a video by Professor Mike Vetch about five years ago about basically web science and how the web had changed. And the last time I checked a few years ago, it had 12 million views. That, and it was, a, it was an academic piece of work. So it, these things are worth tracking. Uh, policy documents, you know, for, for our own faculty, things like nice, nice evidence, um, it's checking. So I say it will check. They're adding more and more to these all the time. So these are things that we didn't know. It's telling us things that we didn't know. Um, so how 
you want to make sure that your research doesn't kind of get missed out is always make sure that your research has a DOI. In, in, in the University of Sheffield we've got Figshare which is a repository for putting up data sets and when you put something in there, an art, any kind of artifact, it will give it a DOI. Even Mendeley now allows uh, academics to put up data. So you can put up data in there and again it will give you a DOI. Once you've got that, that's something that can be tracked. Okay, it's like a kind of a tracking code. Um, the link needs to be in the majority of the, the actual post. So Altmetric can't pick up things that are in headers. You know, so if there's something that's actually just in the header of, uh, of a blog post, it's not going to pick that up. It needs to be in the body of it. So, and they, they're always keen to find out if there's anything they're missing. They're very, they're very much like a lot of kind of the more modern kind of academic tech companies. They're very keen to hear what they're missing out on because they, 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 they know they can't get everything right all the time. Um, but say, traditional metrics are very slow to recruit. This is a, a piece um, that was written about uh, a raptorial dinosaur with exceptionally long feathering. Uh, and this was, this was kind of uh, Web of Science, Crossref, Scopus, it was published uh, 15th of October 2014, I think this screenshot is about nearly a year old. There was no citations, but it had been tweeted by 44 people and it had been picked up by 41 news outlets. So that's a lot of attention early on. And we can kind of drill down, it's been picked up by the National Geographic, by Science Now, by Der Spiegel in Germany, so we can see that, that piece of research is gaining attention, it has no citations, but Der Spiegel, National Geographic are covering it. That is worth knowing. You would be a fool, if you wrote that paper and you didn't want to know that, you'd, you really would be a fool not to want to know, not, not to know that. And with the data that we can get, looking at uh, from, from bios in Twitter, um, it can start to see um, who geographically is actually sharing this, communicating this. So we get to see whether there's any patterns. You know, is there a lot of people in Japan talking about our research? Is there a lot of people in Canada talking about our research? Again, there may be some reason about that, potential collaboration. You know, it's, it's sort of insights that we can find out. And it, it applies different weightings. Things like news gets eight points. If, you, if, if your research is covered in news, it gets eight points. If Twitter, if you get a tweet, it's one point. I'd say the weighing is a little bit unfair because I would say if your research is picked up on a news outlet, that's worth quite a lot more than a tweet potentially. But then the tweets can have a different weighing. You know, Stephen Fry tweeted about your research to his six million followers. Is he back on Twitter? I don't know. But, but if, if he tweeted, then that could actually have quite a weighing. If Ben Goldacre tweeted about your research, very much a, a, a weighing if you're in the, in, in the medical fraternity. So um, it's not. Uh, so I would pay less attention to that number. The number is less important for me. Um, more important is perhaps the, the, the kind of the smaller number. I just wrote this for the LSC, and again going back to what Tom said, you know, I, I blog a lot as well, and uh, it is a good way to kind of get your your ideas and thoughts out. And I thought about this number, and I thought actually, possibly the more important number is the number zero, because. If you've got a zero altmetric score, your research is not being talked about at all probably. It's not being communicated in any way. So you've at least got a platform to build on. So um, I would be wary of sort of like numbers. Um, and here's a, here's a tweet from somebody. He said, uh, why does altmetric launch demonstrates the low impact of my Wiley article? At least I know. At least I know and I've got somewhere to kind of start from. We can also get some kind of context, so going back to the, the piece about the dinosaur, we can get to see where it kind of ranks in terms of uh, articles published in that particular uh, title in Nature Communications. We can also find out where it ranks in terms of the actual year, the period of time it's been, been given, so it gives us more and more insights. We can get to find out how many people have saved it on uh, Mendeley, which again, say, if someone's saving it in Mendeley, Mendeley has 5 million users, and there's over a I think last count, um, I think it's about over 500 million articles now on Mendeley, um, which uh, 5 million, 500 million, which makes it a massive database of research. Um, but if it's getting saved in there, there's a chance it's going to be cited. Someone saved it, they may cite it, they put it in a reference management package. At the University of Sheffield, we have an old metrics, we have an old metrics account, and we can explore the data. So this is um, all mentioned articles from the uh, University of Sheffield, and um, we can we can see sort of like that period, sort of like from May 2014 to May 2016, 126,000 mentions. 
And we can see that there's been 105 mentions on Weibo. There might be some relevance to that, why it's been mentioned in, in, in China. But we can also see uh, it's been, our research has been mentioned in 500 policy documents. And we can drill into that data, we can see which policy documents, we can see when it was mentioned, we can go and find this out. Um, I can find out for myself, you know, I can go in and see, and I've probably, I've added this, you know, I've kind of, um, these will be some of my tweets. Uh, so, but, but uh, you know, uh, who's to say that uh, academics have never cited themselves? Um, mm. But uh, we can go in and look at individuals and see again what uh, what what is being what is being said. We can find out a timeline. So you know, we can literally publish a piece of research and watch to see if anything happens, anything starts to come in. We can see the dates. This was for Shah, and these were all tweets here that were picked up, inequality with healthcare, um, implications on uh, for our target for quality care resource. Uh, so these are things that we've done and people have either commented on and tweeted on so we can drill down and see see what's going on. We can put in filters, we can look at uh, alt metrics over a period of time, we can look for keywords, we can pick specific journals. We can create searches using this platform and bring that data in. So you can get like you know a daily, monthly, weekly report on 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 not metrics. But there is concerns about gaming. You know this idea that people, you know, um, there was a story about a year ago of a professor who um, had something like 60 odd papers retracted because he'd peer reviewed him himself. He basically created loads and loads of email addresses and he kept saying, oh, this guy will review this paper, and this guy will review my paper, and it was him. And the only reason he got rumbled was a journal editor thought, these reviews are coming back like within 24 hours. This is unheard of. And he'd just gone to the effort of making false personas. So it ha it's, ha it's, ha it's been happening for years. That was a very extreme example. Um, so, so it's going to happen with this, but Altmetric do try and audit the data. They don't do things like Facebook likes. It's too, it's too transient. It's too quick. It's too immediate. A share takes a bit more effort to actually share it. And they do try and have systems in place to flag up suspect activity. So, so there are these. And again, you know, we're not using these at this point to, to, to measure the quality. We're just using it as a way to find out how this is being communicated. Impact Story was started by Jason Priam and Heather Power. Jason Priam is the guy who termed the word altmetric uh, in 2010 with a, a bunch of other people. Uh, and uh, they, this works with ORCID. And for those who are not aware of ORCID, go and explore ORCID. Any early career researchers, go look at ORCID. It is an individual ID for you that you will have for the rest of your academic life, really useful for, for people who may change their name in the course of their research and may feel, you know, uh, that they're going to end up with two identities, which some of my colleagues have. So it's a way of bringing everything into one place. And it's increasingly becoming um, a requirement for various funding bodies. If you want to go publish in a Royal Society journal, if you want to get an NIHR fellowship, you'll need one of these anyway. They take five minutes to set up. They'll take a bit longer to populate depending on the kind of the, uh, the the material you've got. Someone like Professor John Brazier, thankfully he's got a PA but he has that many kind of publications, I'm sure you're the same Ravi, that kind of populating uh, uh, ORCID would take a little bit more time than a career researcher but you can set up uh, uh, an impact story account with ORCID and again this works in a slightly different way but it brings in it looks at your kind of publications, it looks at the mentions that you've got, uh, and again, it kind of has these little badges and shows you what's your greatest hit and it shows you where your global reach reaches and things like that. So, very, very useful, and it has all these achievements, you know. So, uh, it says, My research has been discussed in seven countries. That's high, only 34% of researchers have their work as well been discussed. So, you get these kind of, if you like that sort of thing, then it's, 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 it's worth just having a look at at least. Um, and you get to see again, you can drill down, you can see who's tweeted it. So I can see there that I tweeted my own, my own paper, so I know that, but who wouldn't tweet their own paper? Um, it's not like I've made up kind of 60 personas to review them. So, um, and again with Mendeley, just briefly on Mendeley, within there we get more metrics, we can see who are saving the papers, we can see how many people are saving that, and Mendeley are increasingly uh, you know, if we look aside from the kind of the Elsevier connection, Mendeley is a very, very good tool, and they're very keen 
to kind of look at these stats and this data as well so we can get to see uh, who is actually saving things so it gives us more uh, kind of I've, I've pretty much I started late didn't I? so about 20 minutes so yes and I borrowed some slides from Altmetric which they allow me to have because why 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 reinvent the wheel when they've actually done it better than me so uh, Graham okay, thank you. on to you Thank <clears throat> you.